In this box is an entire gaming PC. Oh, not a gaming PC, what the hell? In this little box is an entire PC, and I'm gonna try play games on it. Now, straight off the bat, it's clearly not packaged very well. I'm actually quite worried about the state of this thing. But before we unbox it and have a look at the actual PC, I just want to point out something interesting about it. This little HDMI dongle PC thing actually has a quad-core Intel Atom CPU in it. And what that means is that it has four times more cores than that Apple TV that I turned into a retro gaming console the other day. And it's also got four gigs of RAM, which is a lot more than the 256 meg, I think, in the Apple TV. So this thing should perform pretty well co comparatively. I'm actually really hoping that I can play Half-Life 2 on it. If I can comfortably play Half-Life 2 on this PC thing, uh, I'd be really happy with its performance. So now I'm going to unbox this thing. I'm going to try and open up the little PC because I really want to see what it looks like inside and I love trying my best not to break things and then after that I'm gonna try and play some games so over here we have the ace PC this is the box as you can see it's a pocket PC with Intel inside <laughs> that's exciting I guess and then over here on the back they didn't actually check any of the specifications but I do know that this one has the Intel Atom Z8350 CPU in it and it's got four gigs of RAM which it doesn't say anywhere and it's also got 64 gigs of flash based storage because well, they can't fit a mechanical drive in this thing. So let's actually open it up and see what it looks like. Okay, so I guess I just slit that open and then we kind of slide it up. Oh yeah, there we go. And there we go. So this is the actual Ace PC and it's tiny. It really is very small. I mean, that's it on the palm of my hand. Uh, but let's see what else it comes with in the box. So under there we've got like an HDMI extender cable. This is actually quite useful. So it's female to male. And then here we have the actual power brick, which leads to my least favorite USB connector, but that's fine. With all of that out the way, let's have a look at the actual PC. Ah, oh, that's nice. So as you can see, it's actually very well ventilated all the way through. Um, one of its selling points is the fact that it's fanless, so this is completely quiet. Now, as far as I.O. goes, it's got a USB 3 port, a USB 2 port, and then it's got that like USB mini power port, and then this is the actual power button. And then on this side, you have a card reader. It's a really small card reader, but it is a card reader nonetheless. And then it connects via this HDMI port. Now, the plastic is actually damaged on here. Um, oh, that's glue, actually. Oh, okay, never mind. That's just glue. So I've got this iFixit popper opener thing. So let's see if we can actually just. Now, if I was more competent than I actually am, um, I would have put more time into trying to open this thing up. I may get back to it after I finish the video with it, um, but I'm not gonna try open it because I know I'm gonna break it, because uh, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be opened up. Okay, I have to admit, we're not off to a great start. This is, <laughs> the process has been taking really long. Oh, but there we go, we're almost there. That is a delay that I've not seen in a while. I wonder what speed the storage is on this. I'm actually going to do like um, a storage test to see how fast the flash memory runs on this on this setup. <laughs> Honestly, this experience is quite similar to using like an office PC. You know, like wherever you work, the PC that you have to interact with. Oh, I opened so many of these. That's not particularly fast storage. That's kind of similar speeds to a normal hard drive. Uh, that's not ideal. Uh, that might actually be one of the reasons why there is some stuttering and stuff when it comes to the desktop experience. Although, as we can see, with nothing running except Steam, we're still pegged at 100% usage. So let's see how we can game on this thing. And then after that, I'm gonna run Cinebench on this PC and see what kind of Cinebench score we get. That's weird. I've never seen that before. 
Okay, there we go. It's struggling. Okay, but it's because it's all on like media. It's all on high and stuff. That's your problem. Um, it does kind of. This this is not playable at all, is it? Okay. Yay. Oh no. Okay, so let's let's drop the resolution because that's the only real option we have available here. We have 720p Half-Life at the lowest settings and I mean this isn't amazing performance. We're we're barely hitting 25 frames. We're barely averaging 25 Oh, someone's shooting at me. Let's let's try a bit that isn't as expansive as that because this is like when you're in the outside world. It's kind of the most demanding area of Half-Life 2. Yeah, see, this is <laughs> like this is not acceptable gaming performance. Even Half-Life One really struggles. Like, how is it struggling to run this? It it doesn't really make any sense. Wait, let's see if we because there's a there's a. A setting for low video quality. Let's try that and see what. Oh. Okay, so it has to restart for that. Um, let's see if. Oh, okay. This is this is a bit better, but it's still stuttering. Oh yeah. Let's enable that with the lower resolution. Yeah, like I would consider this a playable experience. So you can play a game that was launched in. 1999 I think let's quit here and then see what other options we have and then finally we're gonna try run oxygen not included the reason for that is because it is a 2d game um, so maybe that makes it a little bit easier on on the little PC um, no sweat because we just want to see the actual gaming performance uh, of, of a 2d game because maybe it can handle that better maybe it's full 3d that really destroys it That is so irritating. I've been waiting for the last 15 damn minutes for this game to load and then it crashes. But to be fair, this game isn't very stable. It crashes on my other system fairly regularly as well. Okay, okay, it's not crashed again. We're, we're hitting four FPS. <laughs> four, four frames per second. That's not, that's not a good start. Apply. Okay, yes, that's doubled the FPS, but we're still <laughs> only getting eight. Um, this is 100% not playable. This is absolutely horrendous. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what's going on here? Half-Life, I mean, it's still a bit of a stuttery mess, but it's running better. I think it's really weird because... If anything, Half-Life 2 is performing better than Half-Life 1 was. I mean, this is arguable. No, it's not playable. Like, even though you're hitting a fairly high frame rate, um, the the variation makes it unplayable. It feels like, it feels horrendous. <laughs> now, this this is honestly the most excited I've been about a thing in a while. Um, but yeah, we're gonna run. Cinebench R15 on on this little guy. Let's let's see how it does. Eighty-nine. The Cinebench score on this PC is eighty-nine. I definitely think that's the lowest Cinebench score I've ever seen. Like, if your single core benchmark result was 89, you would be disappointed in your CPU. 
Now, unfortunately, running games on this thing didn't go very well. Like, weirdly, Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1 perform exactly the same. That doesn't make any sense to me. I guess that means there's some kind of weird bottleneck in here. Um, yeah, that's super weird. Even 2D games, like No Oxygen Included, didn't work very well at all. Although it is quite a beautiful 2D game, so maybe it's like texture, texture complexity that's an issue. Now, I know that I didn't do the whole installing an emulator on it and turning it into like a SNES thing like I did with the Apple TV. And yes, I'm gonna keep referring to it as a SNES, uh, but I didn't do it because I don't really know if I care or if you care. And I thought that it could run PC games so I don't have to turn it into a retro games console. And then also because ROMs are bad. Naughty ROMs! But let me know in the comment section below if you do want me to do that. And with that, it brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all those things. And until the next video, bye-bye.